Stocks and bonds continue to fall as investors trim the rate cut bets on the back of cautious comments from central bankers and on strong U.S. economic data. So the U.S. dollar recovers and the volatility is rising again. So welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So investors continue to come back to their senses and the letter involves trimming the rate cut expectations that went well ahead of themselves over the past few months. So yesterday, the Federal Reserve's Beige Book survey suggested that the resilient consumer spending in the U.S. during the holiday season helped propel the U.S. economy in the recent weeks. And another solid rise in the U.S. retail sales data released yesterday also came to confirm that spending in the U.S. didn't slow by the end of last year. On the contrary, the data printed its highest pace in three months. So, the stronger economic data from the US added to the thinking that, yes, maybe March is just too early for the Fed to announce the first rate cut because, well, there is no apparent reason for the Federal Reserve to rush toward the rate cuts as early as in March. So, the Fed will likely start cutting the interest rates in the first half of this year and cut generally throughout the year, but March seems overly optimistic given the ongoing strength that we see in the U.S. economic data. So, the probability of a March rate cut from the Fed fell to around 60% from around 80% at the start of this year. The U.S. two-year yield advanced 15 basis points yesterday and is up by 25 basis points since the start of this week. The U.S. 10-year yield studies above the 4% level. The U.S. dollar index is pushing higher, even though the index couldn't extend gains above its 200-day moving average yesterday. The S&P 500 comes under a fresh selling pressure near a peak, and volatility is also rising. And given how far the Fed does and the market bulls push their interest rate cut bets over the past few months, well, there is clearly room for further downside correction in both the stock and the bond markets and potential for a further recovery in the US dollar against most major currencies. So that's the global view on where the whole thing is going. Now, central bankers, Bank CEOs and other influential figures of the investment world continue to talk in Davos right now. They continue to push back on the interest rate cut expectations. They highlight the need to consider the upside risks for inflation due to the rising geopolitical tensions in the Red Sea region. And they continue to warn that the market's optimism regarding the rate cuts may have the opposite impact on the central bank's rate policies in that too much optimism could delay the interest rate cuts. This is what the European Central Bank chief Christine Lagarde said in Davos at her speech yesterday. Well, she said that the overly optimistic interest rate cut expectations don't help the central banks fight against inflation as they obviously do listen the financial conditions a bit too prematurely. She, however, hinted that the ECB will likely cut the race by or in summer. And this is the very first time we heard her considering rate cuts. So to me, it feels like the market and the central bankers have started to move toward each other. Even though, even though the time gap between when investors price in the first rate cuts from the major central banks and when central bankers contemplate the rate reductions should continue narrowing to find an optimal balance. And that should involve, as I said before, as I keep saying, a deeper downside correction in stock and bond markets and a further recovery in the US dollar. Now, for those who are looking for some fun news, well, Donald Trump is campaigning right now, and Donald Trump's digital world acquisition stock, which is a SPAC company, and we should take this social media company called Truth Social Public, is coughing back to life these days, as the first results from Trump's election campaign are looking, well, impressively 
good. I'm telling you guys, never say never, the dude could actually be back to the White House before this year ends, yes, yes, it's a possibility, and use his true social as a new platform to, well, communicate his presidential stuff. How Trumpy, but it could actually boost that whack. So today, coming back to the serious and normal stuff, investors will keep an eye on the Spanish bond auctions and the US Philippine index. The euro dollar tested the 200-day moving average to the downside at yesterday's trading session. And price rebounds could be interesting opportunities for building fresh short positions in the euro dollar targeting the 107.70-108 range. Cable, on the other hand, is better but above its 50-day moving average after a surprise rebound in the UK's December inflation numbers weakened the BOE dose hands at yesterday's trading session. Cable is testing the 127 offers to the upside with, however, a limited upside potential given that the Fed's rate cut expectations are being well, in play right now and when the Fed is in play well the other central bank expectations must just wait their turn to speak up in Japan the dollar yen advanced to 148.50 level, a move that no one really saw coming by the end of last year. Remember when the Bank of Japan normalization bet started fueling long positions in the Japanese yen. So if there is just one place in this FX market that will keep making investors mad, well, as well, the Japanese yen. Because data released this morning in Japan show that well, the Japanese core machinery orders fell 5% in November. So the data is calling for a more supportive BOJ to fix all this rather than a rate hike or a rate normalization. So still in Asia, China printed a 5.2% growth for last year earlier this week. Well, so that 5.2% was not a major achievement, mind you, as a 5% rebound from the pandemic crash in the economy matched nothing better than a mega 2% growth compared to a non-COVID year, it is said, and the rest of the economic data from China was also mixed. Industrial production was better than expected in the month of December, while retail sales grew well slower. Chinese equities also barely reacted to the news of a trillion yuan worth of stimulus earlier this week. The sell-off in the CSI 300 index accelerates right now and the focus remains on the developing deflation story in China and the worsening property crisis. As such, the Aussie feels a pinch of the soft China, soft jobs figures from Australia and the stronger US dollar. The Aussie dollar sank below its 200-day moving average yesterday and is preparing to test the 100-day moving average that sends near the 0.6510 level to the downside. The outlook for the Aussie turns neutral from positive and the only thing that could actually slow the sell-off in the Aussie is the technical indicators hinting that the pair will soon step into the oversold conditions. In the energy markets, crude oil is better a bit and the barrel of American crude is testing the $73 per barrel offers again this morning on, yes, the Red Sea tensions and also on OPEC's forecast that global oil demand will actually swell by a robust 1.8 million barrels per day next year and exceed growth in supplies and keep the market in deficit. Now, the OPEC forecast should be taken with a pinch of salt, obviously, as OPEC has an interest in making these numbers look in favor of them and in favor of oil prices. But what's real right now is that sharp decline in shipping transits through the Red Sea region, which will likely continue to push the shipping costs higher and could also squeeze the energy markets and throw a floor under the oil sell-off near the $70 per barrel level. So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Özkardeş and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and interesting comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments your reactions and your questions below as usual and follow us on instagram on x and on linkedin for regular 
market updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments and please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow and until then, good day trading. Thank you.